Well, hello everyone. This is Eddie Speed, founder of Note School, and uh, we have a great training session today. And a lot of times, Kevin Shortail here, my friend, uh, he is introducing me as the expert because I founded Note School and started this about 37 years ago, and uh, have a little experience on the topic of due diligence. But I'm going to introduce Kevin as the expert today because when it comes to online due diligence and websites and sourcing information. He is definitely Note School's uh, go-to man and he helps our internal team a lot in the assets that we own and manage. So, Mr. Kevin Shortell, welcome. Uh, hey, Eddie. Good to see you. Hello, everybody. So, uh, you know, Kevin, I, I think this is really, you know, this is the biggest, clearly the biggest change in the industry of how you initially start on a file. So. You know, back in the 80s, when I was going to, uh, seriously, yeah. in the 80s, when I was going to closed banks, that the FDIC had closed the bank down, then later there became a whole government entity for banks and savings and loan called the Resolution Trust Corporation, mm -hmm. right? And they, they, we would go in there and do what we call spread loans. And there would be a stack of files, and I'm not exaggerating, from the floor to the ceiling all the way across a long wall. And we'd have to pull those files out and write down the information and gather that stuff. And we didn't have any way of going online and checking right. information, at least at the moment. And there were, you know, and then we'd have to go back and call local realtors and call people to go look at it for us and do all that kind of stuff. And it made us kind of resourceful in learning to use things like, you know, off-duty firemen and calling the local community bank and ask them who they would go use to go look at something. And we, we still teach some of those concepts. Mm -hmm. Kevin, you can get through a file insanely fast today online. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't order like a BPO or order like a deeper level inspection, but you can you can start smelling pretty quick whether you need to do a deeper dive quickly or you just know that you can kind of blow the deal up and it's not going to work and move on. And I watch you do this in class all the time. And, and I remind my staff, uh, you know, where we're just all back here doing the note space all day, every day. I'm like, hey, Shortel's found two more websites here, you know, that are really cool. And so I regard you as kind of the research giant uh, around our space. And so just give us kind of a, just, just give us a little bit background, Kevin, kind of how you started and how you start digging and looking for those things. Yeah, I, I, I going back as you said in the in the 80s, I remember spending countless hours in the courthouse, and you were only as good as the, how fast and quick you were on the microfilm or going through the books, and and it was just limited information, and uh, it was definitely a different business. A huge advantage today, when when you think of it, in a way, you have um, well. Here's a good example. Multiple listing service used to be physical books. I mean, that's when, as a real estate agent, that's what you had. You had to go through books, and then you're throwing them out at the end of the month, and a whole a bunch of new books come in. Today, you have multiple listing service online. So um, it's really the, the process, I think, overall with this is to, when you have so many available assets today, which we do, which is another huge advantage, you've got to be able to really sort through to see which ones are worth more of your time and effort. So I think of it in terms of really two levels of due diligence. There's that surface level of due diligence where you're just kind of sifting through enough to find the ones that fit in your wheelhouse, if you will. Once you find those, great, let's spend more time on those and take a deeper dive. Because what you don't want to do in this business simply because of the huge amount of inventory you know, just get a, all right, I'm going to start on line one and just research the heck out of this one only to find out after you've invested a good bit of time that certain key things just don't, don't work for you. And uh, again, we always talk about due diligence, personalizing your due diligence also, right? Because uh, 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 you have to narrow it down to what works for you. You may pass on a deal that works completely uh, well for somebody, somebody else. So you kind of set your parameters and then you go through it a little bit quickly and you're right. The advantage we have today is uh, uh, really amazing, all the information available uh, at our fingertips, and it does enable you to expeditiously get it down to these are the ones that seem to make the most sense, let me take a, a deeper dive. So I pulled some of the websites that, uh, that we use in the class, and um, put them in what I think is a pretty logical order, because uh, one of the first things I look at as um, 
looking at the property before I get into some of the due diligence folders and such, I try to figure out the price value because as as we always talk about, investment to value ratio is one of the key components on really all notes, performing, non-performing, because that kind of sets your, you know, your 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 risk there. So I have a tendency to look for value first. So it's pretty easy today to jump online and get some other opinions of of value. So I thought we'd start with those. I'm going to go ahead and share my my screen here. Uh, going back to uh, MLS, for example, today you've got Realtor.com, and on Realtor.com you can see. I hope that's big enough. Let me go a little bit bigger for you there. Um, on simply Realtor.com, you can put in the uh, full address and zip code of the properties, and it will find comparable sales for you. It'll find comparable listings for you uh, as well, and rents. So all in one site, you get an idea. Now these are all. Um, multiple listing service listed assets on here, uh, but it can give you a good uh, idea. And I know you guys use this in the office uh, as well, Eddie, right? Yeah, th this is for, we we don't put a super high value on just going to a website and looking at property values when it relates to low price band assets. Okay, mm -hmm. um, but the most reliable source when we you, in fact, you and I did a call, like just to re, before we did this webinar, it's just like, you know, we've got a number of employees that are back their own sites all day looking at stuff, right? On assets that we own or we're evaluating to buy. Mm -hmm. And the guy that runs all that for us, Charles Mangan said, my favorite site that I send my employees to, you know, just, we we felt that was the case, but we're just verifying it. He said, I, I'm, I like, I like uh, realtor.com. And uh, right. and he doesn't like Zillow, right? But understand, Zillow is a very valuable tool. It's just when you're dealing in low price band assets, the pattern he sort of feels like is it is it shows a, a zestimate value that's higher than what the BPO is going to come in at. Now, Kevin, you know me. I'm going to argue with all these values anyway. Right, because I'm going to say when the house rents for not eight fifty a month, and you tell me it's worth forty grand, I'm going to be like, "That's those are all cash sales in in, in MLS." So at some point, we'll diffuse some of what we're trying to do anyway. But we're the purpose of this today, guys, is I wanted Kevin to show you guys, and this is a precursor to what you're going to do at live classes, right? Kevin like beats this up a lot at live classes. So we go through that, well, it could be this and that and stuff. And the best way to do it is just pull real deals up and show it and carve through it and analyze all this kind of stuff. And we're going to sort of, we sort of know where the punchlines are because we've done so much of this. And we're going to kind of get to that point. So this is really just, really just to, Kevin, think in terms of preparing somebody to come to a class, I think. Sure. And, and also by extension on that, some of these websites like Realtor.com I'm sure is not new to everybody and some of the, the sites we're going to start with are, are sites that you're probably familiar with um, yeah. at some level, but I've got some other ones that as we progress through this are probably websites you've never heard about before that really hone you into certain specifics. Um, as as we'll get to here, so yeah, I agree. When it comes to value, you know, again, at least with our assets, with uh, people that buy assets from our trading platform through Notes Direct, we provide BPOs, as you said, and that's an opinion of value as well. So this is another opinion that you can get through Realtor.com to kind of back that up to see if it's in the ballpark to see where where you are. Uh, there's other ones, as you mentioned, Zillow. And again, Zillow can be more or less accurate depending upon where it is. And of course, Zillow uses a platform of um, uh, algorithms, if you will, based upon statistics in the area, but they do not know the condition of the properties. And that's another reason sometimes in the lower price band, you see Zillow have a higher valuation simply because Zillow assumes it's in marketable uh, condition. Uh, and they haven't been out to the property now. Zillow also is growing in in their in their um, algorithms or gathering more information on there. So yes, it will be an industry uh, player. There's no question. There's a lot of people that look at those uh, those sites. But for our purposes in the note business, it's really looking at several different values and, and comparing how close they are to the BPO, and that usually is a triggering mechanism to say. 
I really need to get a second opinion on this. I have to send somebody out to the property. If they're relatively closer and you've got some experience, maybe, and the BPO is newer, maybe you're comfortable uh, enough with that. So yes, these are not the know-all, end-all of what the properties may be worth. Zillow also recently purchased Trulia. And truly is another one uh, that will give a valuation. Sometimes it just gives us a, a zip code average of what the properties are if they don't have enough information. But I also use Zillow to look at the um, heat map as far as uh, crime goes. Let me see if I can put in a zip code there for you. I'd have to put in an actual property and I'll just click on one of these totally at random here for you and it gives you now this little heat map it shows you the schools it gives you map view street view some easy uh, links on there commuting shopping it, so you can get a lot of different demographics about what's going on in that community including a crime and it does this little neighborhood heat map here which shows green being relatively little to very no crime at all and if you've got some red in there there's a, an element of of crime in that particular area and once again as you said, depending upon where you are in the lower price band, I mean, we should have an individual tolerance, especially in the lower price band, for some tinges of, uh, there's going to be some criminal uh, criminal activity that, that happens. And there's a practical application to it, right? As we progress with students, like, we, we realize we're on sites that you guys know these sites, right? We don't, we're not clueless that you've never heard of Realtor.com or Zillow or Trulia, right? We're showing you more specifically after using them several thousand, thousand times, what we like about certain the certain sites and what we don't like. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and that's that's absolutely a a big a big factor is, um, you, you know that we want we want to be able to to utilize these sites for what we do. I, I have students doing due diligence on performing notes that have been paying perfectly for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And they'll pull the Trulia up and they go, "It's Eddie, it's not garden green. Right. <laughs> okay, meaning it's all perfect and there's no crime. And I'm like, who cares? They've been paying for 10 years. Now, I don't mean if it were all chartreuse. Right. There, that might be a different topic. But there's some tolerances that as we progress that we'll talk about that. Yeah, uh, no, no question, uh, no question about it. Uh, as far as valuation, also another one is uh, e-appraisal, and uh, e-appraisal does have a tendency to be, for the most part, on the higher end of things uh, as well. But again, quick, easy information just to kind of get other opinions based upon square footage and sales data and uh, county records, just to bounce off and get an idea. Um, I like HomeFacts as well. Uh, HomeFacts does the same thing. It gives you uh, area information as well as valuation numbers, but they'll also put on there if they don't have enough information, they won't put a valuation number on there uh, for you. So they have a certain degree of information that they would need to see, but they have all these other facts where you can get, you know, and we've seen this happen before, Eddie, where people get so deep into in the, in this business where they look in that every minute detail uh, about a demographic and it does it throws them off of the, the the course of things where as you were saying the people have been making payments for 10 years they have it uh, they live in that neighborhood they know the neighborhood and you know you can't overdo it with these demographics yeah they're they're tools and they're tools that we use every day and and we, and we and that's what we're trying to address Last mm -hmm. night, Kevin, I'm, I'll say this before we move on. Last night, I was uh, at, I, I was doing a, a coaching session, a group coaching session with some students. And the student said, uh, well, the BPO says this and Zillow says this. And, you know, he's going, kind of going through his waterfall and stuff. And I said, look, I don't care what Zillow says. Okay. Now, I'm not disregarding that Zillow has spent a zillion dollars doing this stuff. But on this asset class, on this particular type of asset, which was below $100,000, and, and I had a BPO and I had some other crime stats and stuff, I said, in my office, the people that run our asset management side, they would not even think to look at Zillow for that piece of information. Mm -hmm. right? So what we're trying to do is to give you, after we've done this a lot, 
kind of how we maneuver around and what we really like and what we don't like as much. That's the flavor of it. So, yeah, and you know, one of the concepts that we always talk about is you have to balance these out. So by looking at these websites and picking up certain amount of information from it, it's enough for you when you do send somebody out, which is going to be fairly often a number of times, if not the majority of times, uh, depending upon what kind of notes you're looking at, that you will so send somebody else out there for another BPO or at least an external inspection or something like that. But if you've gone through these websites and you picked up the little triggers in each one, when you contact that person, you can kind of let them know, and hey, by the way, give us your opinion of, of what the crime looks like in that, in that area. Um, uh, give us your opinion on on this, or I noticed, uh, you know, certain um, certain data that indicated a, a, a rougher area nearby. Can can you check that out for me as well? So these are other just little feelers that you'll get in there that you have enough knowledge base when you do send somebody else out there to, to do it. You know, you can give that little added uh, feature to them as a heads up of what you would like them to to take into consideration. So there is a difference to a demographic sites. Uh, for example, when you're looking at the one we're looking at right now, which is HomeFax, HomeFax base all of their data on zip codes. Okay, so when they look at uh, uh, zip codes, when they look at crime, they'll give a rating based upon the entire zip code. That's quite different than what you saw at Trulia, which gives you a neighborhood shot. So it's really an idea of looking at both of those concepts, look at the neighborhood, look at the zip code, but certainly everybody would agree there could be parts of the zip code that has elevated crime that completely doesn't affect other parts of the zip code. So make sure that you understand where they're pulling their data from as well. So home facts is going to be zip code based on that. We're truly a uh, on that data is going to come from the actual neighborhood. Uh, another zip code based one is uh, bestplaces.net and bestplaces.net also has a lot of uh, additional information uh, once again about real estate, about crime, about uh, schools, I mean they even get into voting and everything else, right? We don't need all of that, <laughs> that stuff. Fire stations, you know, that? fire stations, you can find local fire stations mm -hmm. for properties. Yeah. Say, why would I want? What are you going to burn it down? Why, why do I want to know where the fire station is? And one of the techniques that we talk about down the road mm -hmm. is calling a fire hall, a fire station, mm -hmm. and finding off-duty firemen that can go by and look at properties for you. They're very reliable, and they're at almost in every shift. A third of those guys do stuff on the side that's right. property related. You know, and and we just have had good luck with that. Now you can't call and act like it's the fire department, okay? You're just calling, saying, "I'm wondering, do you have anybody that's on shift or off shift that might go by and look at a a property? I live out of town and I've got a property. Do you know any anybody that might could help me with that? If you say it in the right way, you're going to have a crazy high success of it working. If you right. call and act like it's the Dallas Fire Department issue, they're going to be like, what? <laughs> yeah, you're not asking for an engine to go out there and take a drive by a property for you. <laughs> yeah, so a good good insight here again because it will have average rents and it will have uh, vacancy rates and for sale rates and and things like that. And once again, understanding the the data here is important, and that's where these little um, uh, icons come in. We had a, a class a couple uh, weeks ago, Eddie, and we were looking at an area. Oh gosh, I can't remember where it was, but it it um, had a high vacancy rate. It was almost a, like a thirty high thirty percent vacancy rate uh, when I pulled it up on best places. And of course, everybody's eyes immediately drove into that. And then what I explained to them was says once again, you have to understand where the data comes from. I said this includes vacation homes and this area was definitely a vacation area so they considered those homes that were not lived in year round to be vacant you know or someone not understanding that data might go well heck look at all these empty homes <laughs> and that's not uh, what it it means there so understanding the data uh, so best places and and um, uh, the uh, home facts they use this zip code and a lot of that comes from census data so that's what they're they're considering uh, in that data but I do like to look at this one just to see trends and, and nice projections there that give you when the data was updated most of this now is December 
uh, 2016 data. So again, at the stage of, of due diligence that we would be doing right now, this is our surface level. We're simply gathering some stats, gathering some information. We're not totally getting, as you like to say, wrapped around the axle on this stuff, but just pointing little indicators to us that we can follow up on. Because you're right, if the numbers still work, if the people are still making payments, or the ITV on a not performing note uh, still works, there's normally not anything in here that's make, gonna make you run the, the other direction. You're just starting to gather some information to build the story uh, to as this deal works. And part of that, of course, is looking at the property. And I would think everybody's familiar with either Google Earth or Google Maps and uh, how you can, uh, you know, we don't have to go out like a lot of uh, real estate investors do and they, they drive neighborhoods and are driving around all over the place and canvassing and all of that sort of stuff. We do virtual. You know, we, we drive by properties on a virtual basis. Uh, we can look at the dates of when the, the satellite imagery was, was taken and, um, you know, again, use our judgment on that as to what the neighborhood looks like now, what it might look like. And again, it gives you a good feel for what's going on when you drive down some of these streets and in uh, uh, wherever it is that you're looking on a particular property here and you start to um, you know see where the parks are you start to see the neighborhoods are they are there a lot of homes uh, boarded up what do the cars in the driveway look like and all those sorts of things you can get right down obviously to the street level I think most people are familiar with that here's what sometimes though people are not familiar with Eddie we do this of course throughout the United States reality we do have the Midwest and the Southeast as as kind of target areas but virtually we go to where the deals are which means we always have to look at deals for best case scenario but we have to prepare for worst case scenario and worst case scenario for many times is we're gonna have to foreclose and I don't know what it is but a lot of times people who are not trained in the business or not trained in real estate enough or simply haven't uh, done business in other states there's a an assumption like well here's how we do it in in um, uh, Tennessee so that's how they do it everywhere and that's <laughs> that could not be further from the truth and people have to learn that there's other ways that foreclosure can happen and that's where I use this site and this is foreclosurelaw.org foreclosurelaw.org and what I like about this one is on one website it gives you all the states and it gives you in plain English how the foreclosure works okay because there are states that use a judicial process there are states that use a non-judicial process and there are states that leave it up to the lender uh, to loan under either one of those through a mortgage or a a deed of trust so you don't have to memorize every state and what happens but as you're doing your due diligence and it's in a state you may not be familiar with so maybe it's in Missouri and you don't live in Missouri very quickly you can establish well look Missouri allows both judicial and non-judicial type of loans in that state so what am I looking at in that file? Is it going to be a deed of trust or a mortgage? And that would be something that I would take a look at to make sure because that could drastically affect what the foreclosure is going to cost in both time and money. Yeah. Now, of course, we also teach when, when you see both, you're typically going to end up with a non-judicial, and that's why it might be 60 days and there's a difference in some states as to how long they take to foreclose and other states and it may even help you kind of if you're starting out do a little bit of targeting based upon the capital and the goals of what you have uh, what you want to accomplish uh, in the business but I found this one very easy to read very easy to follow through uh, just uh, foreclosurelaw.org yeah, one, one yeah, I want to make about this it, guys is we're not saying this is the only website you can source. There's probably five or six different websites mm -hmm. that Kevin has looked at extensively and we've looked at extensively. We're just not kind of saying after we've now poked around a whole bunch around doing this, we're just trying to save you guys some time. And we right. like doing this to kind of prepare you for, this is the kind of thing that we then go really, really dig into when we get to at, at, at a higher level of training and it's just helpful for us to give you some stuff up front. You know, hopefully it's beneficial to you that that with this you become more familiar with it. Right. And securing properties has become uh, special on the non-performing side. That's another 
you know, thing that we have to look at on, on these vacant properties. And uh, as you know, Eddie, there are states that are starting to, to look a lot closer on those. They understand the cost of what vacant properties are, and they've started adding in some, some code enforcement. Now, again, you can kind of go, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? they got code enforcement now. i got to learn about everything in code enforcement. No, uh, you have to zero in on how it may affect you. And one of the sites I use for that is Safeguard Properties. And safeguard properties, if you come down here to the property registration side, mine uh, it doesn't have a flash on here, but if I click on this VPR, and that's their vacant property uh, resources here, vacant property uh, uh, ordinances, when you click on that, mine's, you're going to see you uh, click to use flash here, but it'll open up a map, but it has a drop down menu of state and city and that way you can search that to see if there are any zoning considerations on vacant property that uh, code enforcement my apologies code enforcement uh, situations that you may need to look into if you purchase the note on that property yeah safeguard is a big property preservation company they do preservation work uh, for a lot of the big banks when I go to the trust asset conferences uh, we see Safeguard always, you know, IMN, Mortgage Bankers, Five Star, those kind of, like where there's all just like people that are dealing with multi-thousand asset accounts. Right, and they've got contact information for code enforcement uh, right here as well, uh, just by following through on that. Because yes, that that is a space they're in. They also do clear boards. If you're in Ohio and you know anything about the clear boards, they also do that uh, that work. Uh, in those areas as well, so they're sharing that free resource on there, which is which is great. That that really can zero you in on. Uh, here's what we have information. What you may need to do as far as securing a property, and here's who you would contact uh, as well. Okay, and that's what all the contact info is over here. Um, now, when it comes to county information. You can Google search pretty much anything, right? And I've had people that go, well, yeah, you know, in class, you can just Google search that county or this county and look up this department or that department specifically. And what I've found in practicality is the registrar of deeds may be named the registrar of deeds in some states. In others, it's the recorder's office. The appraiser's office is known as the assessor's office in other areas. And if you're Google searching, you may not be targeting the exact source that you're looking for when it comes to county level. So in other words, if you've done your surface level due diligence, and now I'm kind of assuming that you've looked into the um, uh, the uh, title and you're starting to pursue this deal a little further because everything that was pretty simple we did in the beginning now you're going okay I gotta take a deeper dive into this property that's where this code enforcement comes into play uh, that's where the foreclosure comes into play and that's also where uh, getting down and verifying other information so for example maybe you see property taxes on there and you can't establish whether the property taxes were paid by the uh, uh, individual or maybe was paid under a tax lien situation and you might have to go to the county. I prefer to send people to one website where they can pull up all the county um, uh, entities on one site instead of kind of uh, trying to target it by typing it in simply because there's different names for different things. So I use this netronline.com website all the time for that. It's just quicker and easier to pull up everything in one county. All you do is click on public records and then you simply click on the uh, the state that you're interested in if you want to do it uh, do it that way or what I usually do is just type in the zip code and when you type in the uh, zip code and I'm just throwing one in there when you type in the zip code that shows us it's Broward County and here's the appraiser's office there's a recorder's office and there's a revenue collector's office there's their phone numbers and that's where their websites are so it's pretty easy from this one to tell if I'm looking at I want to verify property tax information or I want to look up something in regards to the taxes I'm gonna to go to the revenue collection office and see what information I can gather there uh, on the website if I need to make a phone call I've got that number if I'm looking for subject property information I'm trying to find out more about this particular property and maybe the chain of title and maybe see a schematic of what the property uh, square footage is and uh, the property history all that sorts of things the valuation both for um, uh, for taxes and possibly uh, fair market valuations from time to time and again, wouldn't live by those, but that would be in this county, the property appraiser's office. 
might be called assessor's office and other places and I can go to their website. If I want to look up recorded documents which could include the, the mortgages and liens and judgments and all those other things, I would want to look at the recorder's office and other areas known as the clerk of court or the registrar of deeds. So once again, if you do it this way, instead of doing a Google search and trying to find a particular county, here when you just put in that zip code, all of them all at one time are right there. A lot easier and practical to use. What about rent? Well, for rent, we look at the, what the BPO says for rent. You've got, um, again, Zillow numbers on, on rent. You've got all the other websites we gave you, Home Facts, they put rent numbers as well. One of the best ones I've really found for us uh, is, is Run a Meter, uh, without question. When you do a search on Run a Meter here, you put in the address of the property, you simply uh, put the number of bedrooms and baths on there and uh, just click on analyze my rent and it will pull up this little meter here that shows you the high end rent, the low end and of course everything in between but what I really like about it is it shows you on a map where your property is located and where all of their comparable rents are and um, it'll show you uh, many times in class this is based upon 25 other three bedroom rentals within a mile I mean, so it's really good, a good data to kind of zero in and get an idea of what that rent may, may be. And of course, Eddie, that plays into a lot of different exit strategies that we teach. Yeah, generally speaking, Kevin, I, I usually find that the, and, and we use an acronym just to make sure everybody's clear about it. We use the word BPO, which is broker price opinion, right? It's the realtor's opinion of value that we've paid for, right? It wasn't a free report. Mm -hmm. uh, but I find that, that a lot of times their rent is low. Mm -hmm. um, and we, once again, we generally are specializing in lower price band assets. So it's not uncommon that we've got a property that rents for eight fifty a month, and yet the BPO, the broker price opinion of value, comes in at forty five or fifty or fifty five thousand, which we say it's worth more than that because of its rentable value. And uh, so so I know that, and, and I'm like you, Kevin, it's hard to argue with Rent-A-Meter because there's the comps, right? It shows you the neighborhood and it shows you where all these houses are rented for and what, what they are. You can get in the Google cart and ride around and go look at them if you want to, right? Yeah, and I've got enough now in using this and also seeing all of the case studies that we build in our class are case studies that uh, previous students that we have taught have done that I'm using now in class as a teaching uh, mechanism and I match up what Renometer said to what they're renting it, it, it for and it's it's uh, it's it's really close it, it's really close to what they have versus what you just said the BPO and that they're they're getting better rents in these areas and this seems to match up a lot better as to what that projected rent uh, may be and that can affect your you know your overall technique as you're starting you know when when you're doing all this due diligence one of the other things that you're doing of course is that thinking in terms of how am I getting in how am I getting out what are my potential exit strategies because you have to start to play those out uh, as well and this is certainly one of those things that would let you know that so a couple other quick ones here, Eddie, I thought I would throw in people might like, you know, from time to time we have to send a door knocker out there and uh, we have to try to reach out and find those folks, see if somebody's occupied or, or, or deliver information, depending upon what stage you are in and owning, uh, owning this note uh, or not. And um, this little website I've had uh, many students have some good success with, just uh, wegolook.com. And uh, wegolook.com can do a, a number of different things in this business, but they have professionals that can go out there, look at the properties. And again, depending upon whether you're researching to buy the note or own the note, you know, you, uh, will depend upon what you utilize their services. Uh, for on that one, but I've heard some very good things about about this, and it's a national network of people. They put together some really good looking reports uh, as well. Excellent. When it when it comes to maintaining that uh, maintaining that lawn, I actually got this one from from Charles in our in our office because we have a lot of students who, even if it's a vacant property, you know what ha can happen sometimes. Code enforcement might start to look at finding a property which you may end up with if it's vacant. Uh, when the grass grows too too tall, and you got to get somebody out there to cut the lawn, and uh, this lawn service uh, company here nationwide, you get a quote. Uh, they send people out there, and uh, we've had a lot of people use this now. 
Uh, Charles has been using this through our uh, uh, some of our deals with uh, the office and had nothing but uh, good things to say about it. They're, they they really are. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story, Kevin. Uh, last year, the guy that that takes care of our lawn and and we live out, you know, in a little more where there's space, so our lawn's a little bigger than the normal lot. And our lawn guy was like gone. He, I remember what it was, and my wife goes, "Oh, you know, our guy's not going to be there and stuff." I said, "Sweetie, just go on lawn love, and I guarantee it'll, it'll work out." She goes on lawn love, Kevin. He charge they charge us about the same thing that we're used to paying Juan, and Juan does a great job, and we're not trying to fire him. But it's just like to go call a national service that you don't even, and they come out and do a good job, and it's the same price that. The guy you've been having do your stuff forever. It's evidence of what we see over and over. Yeah, no, I I, I totally uh, totally agree with uh, with that. And in fact, um, I think Charles did the same thing. Charles is having them cut his lawn now uh, as well. They do a good job and good price. So again, we we just have a big advantage on on uh, being able to do those things uh, uh, today. And uh, speaking of which, coming up on. Uh, on a uh, three-day training here for those of you who are interested in coming out to our three-day training this is a good website to go to <laughs> noteschool.com and noteschool.com we've got all the upcoming classes are listed uh, right here for you we've got all kinds of additional information and, so, and some blogs if you're not following uh, uh, the blogs that come out and the byline that that's coming out uh, all of that is is here for you and uh, why you should attend these classes and gives you a nice little overview of uh, of what we do as well yeah, it's easy to click on there and go learn about a class and obviously you can call us or you can click on there and there's some online videos and stuff talking about the classes. Um, uh, one resource on there, Kevin, is is the byline and the blog. You just click on there real quick and show them how they do it. Go to news. You saw right. Click, right? Just click it yep. on news. Yep. And uh, you've got the blog and then the blog comes out every week, by the way. The byline comes out every month and there's our, our byline and that's our online magazine, if you will. Yeah, we put a lot of energy in this. This is just free stuff, but we put a lot of time and energy into this. Um, I mean, our executive team, a lot of our executive team writes the articles in there. Kevin, Kevin a lot of times pioneers the blogs, but there's a lot of input from a lot the stuff that that we're doing and so I just want to make sure that you guys know if like this is this is stuff that we're we're pouring back to the industry right we're trying to give back to you and, and what that looks like so uh, just things on there obviously our class is coming up you know uh, before you come to a class we're gonna we're gonna have some on-demand stuff we're gonna have homework we're gonna have some things that are you know, critical to kind of get you in a live class as ready as we can to do it because we're going to try to do as many like live case study scenarios as we can and that's one of the reasons that we like to kind of tell you about these these uh, websites that we go to ahead of time so you can dink around in them a little bit and you know Kevin's he's fast when he's up there doing it you know he's going to try to make sure you're following it but it's a lot of times helpful if you've already kind of looked around and scrolled around a little bit and, and, and one funny thing, guys, I'm going to tell you, people try to stump Kevin all the time, okay? I don't care if we're in Denver or Fort Lauderdale or Boston or, or Seattle, right? People will go like some local real estate investor, well, <laughs> pull this up. And Kevin will be like, and, and, I, and, and it's just funny because they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe how accurate that is. And we're like, <laughs> We know we've stumbled through a lot of these websites that weren't accurate, and we and to get to these, and then learning certain strengths that different websites have. Do we just talk about that? One final thing, Kevin. Yeah. I was at a class uh, this summer, and you know we we regularly attract engineer types, right? Software engineers, technical personalities. I mean, we trust me. We regularly, Note School regularly attracts those people. And I had a guy come up to me and said, I'm a software engineer, and yeah, I just want you to know I could build a filter. I could build a filter that could do all of this for you, and then you wouldn't even have to look at assets. And what I said to him was, experience in teaching people the business and teaching success in the business is that if, if I allow you to filter everything that has any kind of a bump in it, you'll end up looking through 200 assets and never find a single one you can buy. 
Right. And so there's a balance at the end of the day that we're going to be careful in showing you, which is these are great tools. And then all of a sudden, let's look at exceptions to the rules and so that you get a sense of what that can look like as well. So there's a there's a there's a deeper thought process than just building a scrape, right? Something that scrapes every website and does everything because when we've seen that, Kevin, we've seen we've got some software engineers, high-end students, right? And they've built their own personal scrapes that do all that for them. And then they come to us and they say, gosh, you guys have on Notes Direct, you, you got 200 assets I could buy, but I can't find a single one that my filters allow for. And I'm like, here's the bad part. Mm -hmm. you know, 150 of those assets, I was dumb enough to buy. And your filter said you shouldn't have bought any of them. And they're going, oh, Eddie, I don't think you would have bought them unless they made sense. I'm like, yeah, there's a common sense application to this business that goes along with that. So as we progress, we'll continue to, to, to drive towards good information. Now what is common sense? Kind of stand back and look, and now what does that tell me? So that's, a, that's part of the equation as well. Yeah. Mr. Shortail, you do a great job at these three-day classes these rich reward three-day classes talking about the websites and applying that common sense and I could not tell people enough about how I enjoy watching that fold as you go to a class and just take real assets that are for sale and apply that process to them and then you kind of built built a little audience participation of yes or no in or out and right. uh, you do a great job of that. Yeah, thanks. And and again, I just wanted to give you just an idea of what this is. In fact, one of the things, as you know, in class I do, I said, look, keep a sheet of paper available at all time because as we even go through class, things will come up and it's like, boom, here's where the website, here, here's where you can find this and here's where you can find that. So this is just a taste of it. And we've got some really uh, uh, other excellent ones that have just constantly grown. So I appreciate it. Good. Uh, you can always go to notesgold.com. There's a phone number you can call about the classes, and uh, or you can click on the live pages, and there is some information and videos about it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shortail, great job. Thank you very much. See you soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.